Welcome back. Well, our research team is standing by to give you the list of top 10 stocks for the day and plenty to talk about this morning. First up, Ultratech Cement on our list. Why are you looking at that? Well, after a while, Sonia, I think uh, the numbers are a little bit disappointing in comparison to what the street was uh, working with. So a little lower than some expectations on the street. Now, the India business, which has the grey volume, cement volumes, that's bulk of the business. Out there, the growth was only around 5%. Some were expecting a number in the high single digits. So that goes down as a bit of a disappointment. The overseas business, that gives some bit of a leg up because on a lower base, smaller part, it grew closer around 20%. And the consolidated number came at around 27.3 million tons. Some on the street were expecting a number closer to around 28 million tons. So the overall growth is around 6%. The possible reasons why the volume growth is a little less than expected, one was that we have festive season. So out there, labor availability becomes a bit of an issue. Next up, you have some pollution-related issues, you know, in North India. You also had winters in North India. Sometimes, you know, that has, uh, that's a bit of a headwind for construction. Elections in select states, so that's why maybe off day got uh, affected in select states. And then you had, uh, you know, the, all of a sudden unseasonal rains in South India, which could have hurt as well. So put all this together, those numbers go down as a bit of a disappointment and a little lower than what some were expecting on the street. But Sonia, what about Aisha Motors? How were those numbers? So, you know, largely the auto uh, company is disappointed yes. in the month of December and Aisha Motors as well. Royal Enfield sales were disappointing, so I'm going with red over there. Uh, the total Royal Enfield sales fell 7% year on year and that just goes to show that the premium end of the market is seeing some moderation, uh, some slowdown in terms of growth. Uh, this is also lower than the CNBC TV18 poll. So Aisha Motors wholesale numbers came in at 63,387, while the poll that CNBC TV18 threw up was at 68,800 units, so much below what the poll threw up. Also, moderns, models with engine capacity of up to 350cc, which is the largest chunk of their segment, that was down 10% year-on-year at 55,400 units. So I'm going with red on Aisha Motors today. Okay, all right. I'm tracking a couple of more companies then which came out with their operational update. Coal India, that's been the stock that uh, has been a big outperform actually in the last 12 months or so. And they came out with an operational update which didn't look too bad. So that's why I'm expecting it to continue its upward trajectory. The production number was up by close to around 8% for the month of December. The offtake number was up by close to around 6%. Now, year to date, that's April till December, production has moved up by close to around 11%, which is very, very good. And normally you had that gap between production as well as dispatches because of evacuation concerns. Now they've been working on that. So that's why offtake as well isn't too bad at around 8.7%. Jefferies has come out with a note. They say at these uh, levels, well, on a, on a PE basis as well as on a dividend yield basis, it's quite attractive. So expecting the stock to continue its upward trajectory. The other one that I'm looking at is APL Apollo Tubes. Those numbers looked a little bit disappointing. But if you pull up APL Apollo Tubes, the last one month chart, you'll see in a roaring market, APL Apollo Tubes actually is down closer to around 5% uh, in the last one month. And from the peak in September, well, the stock has lost closer to around 15%. So maybe the street was sensing a bit of a disappointment showing, and it is a little bit disappointing. So for the past quarter, the total volumes came at around 600,000 odd. That would mean that on a sequential basis, it's a bit of a degrowth. And on a year-on-year -year basis, it's more or less flattish. One reason why those uh, volumes weren't that great is because there was channel destocking in anticipation of the steel price correction. So that's the key reason they mentioned this in their press release as well. The good news is though, VAP, that's uh, value-added uh, products, that continues to move up from around the 55, 56%. It's moved to around 59% on. For the nine months, well, they still delivered a growth of closure around 19%, though for the past quarter, it was a little bit disappointing. And importantly, the new uh, capacity that they commissioned, that's a Raipur plant, well, out there, the utilization levels are steadily moving up. For the past quarter, it was 40%, but for the month of December, it was closer to around 50%. So expecting the stock to open up in the red. But Sonia, back to you. Okay, so TVS Motors, what I'm looking at. You know, at a time when most of the auto companies disappointed, this one actually did very well. So I'm going with green on TVS Motor. Good set of numbers, strong sales continue in December. It's a growth of 25% that TVS Motor has seen in its sales, coming in at a little over 3 lakh units. Now, the poll that we threw up came in at 3.14 lakh units, so not too much of a disappointment either. Very strong performance coming in. The two-wheeler segment saw a growth of 27% and that was led by very good growth in the scooter segment this time around. So, scooter sales went up 34% year-on-year. I'm going with green here. The thing to remember in TVS Motors is that the stock has also seen a very big rally. It's up 50% in the last six months. So, you know, maybe some consolidation around these levels wouldn't harm anyone. Okay, you guys have had a breathless run. Lots of stocks between <laughs> the two of you, but uh, we also have Vivek joining in. He's watching out for a bunch of industrial stocks this morning. Vivek, uh, tell us more about them. 
Absolutely, quite a few stocks on the radar. First on the list is Pargrid. You know, management change coming in over there on the account of retirement of the incumbent. So, Sri Ravindra Kumar Tyagi assumes charge as the chairman and managing director, replacing Sri Srikanth Kandikupa. The second uh, news flow as far as Pargrid is concerned, the company has received another transmission project. So, received the letter of intent for a 20 gigawatt transmission system project in Rajasthan. Uh, the second stock on the radar is Gensol Engineering. The company is looking to raise up to 300 crore either via the QIP route or the preferential issue route. Uh, the third stock that we are tracking is SRF. Now, SRF you know, had earlier incorporated a subsidy known as SRF Alltech. Uh, now, this particular facility was set up for manufacturing of aluminum foil. The company has updated the exchanges yesterday saying that this particular facility has been commissioned and capitalized as an aggregate cost of over 536 crore. The last stock on the radar is GR Infra Projects. You know, the company has received a transmission project in Madhya Pradesh. This particular project was won by a bid in the TBCB project. Annual transmission charge that the company will get is 41.9 crores. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Vivek. Well, let's hop across to Abhishek. He's tracking South Indian Bank, which came up with their update as well. Morning, Abhishek. Uh, morning, Nigel. So, South Indian Bank did come up with its operational update and on a YOI basis, it looked to be on the weaker side and they might have lost market share. Uh, so, uh, uh, CASA ratio continues to deplete over there. That's another negative over there. So, deposits are up 9.5% YOI and about 2% sequentially. Uh, the CASA is up in absolute value, just 2.8% YOI and about 1.4% sequentially. So, you are seeing a dip in the CASA ratio, both YOI as well as quarter on quarter. Advances growth is at 10.8% YOI and about 3.7% sequentially. The CD ratio, credit deposit ratio has improved both YOI and quarter on quarter as well. Back to you. Okay, got that. Uh, thank you very much, Abhishek, for the details. Let's quickly recap our uh, top 10 list for this morning. The stocks that have positive news flow around them are Coal India, TVS Motors, Power Grid, uh, Gensol Engineering, SRF and GR Infra. The ones that have negative news around them are Ultratech Cement, Aisha Motors, APL Apollo Tubes and South Indian Bank. Okay, so that's the top 10 list for today. Let's now move over to equities. Uh, let's now move over from equities to commodities and uh, bring in Manisha Gupta for a roundup of all the action. Manisha, good morning. What do you have your eye on today? So we thank you so much for that. Well, a better day as more and more countries come back for participation uh, for 2024. And uh, what we are dealing with is a weaker China manufacturing data for the month of December. That doesn't do well. So we've seen a bit of a pressure come in for the metals today. The volumes are still on the lower side. Uh, remember, the Japanese markets are shut till 4th of Jan, and there's not so much great news coming in from that country as well. Apart from that, it is going to be the U.S. on yeah, that comes in on Friday. And this is the first indicator in this year on when, how much of interest rate cut can we start to anticipate in the first quarter already. So this is what the street will watch out for. But as a sense of crisis, it is the crude oil prices which continue to move the most. We've started on a positive note right now. There are uh, reports about U.S. forces striking back at Houthi Group in Red Sea. And there are also reports now of Tehran sending warship into Red Sea. So this is uh, a situation that doesn't seem to be de-escalating anytime soon. And we are seeing a premium of that build up in case of crude prices. So positive start and positive moves coming in today as well. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Manisha. Have a good day. Let's take a quick break. On the other side of the break, Amnisha Garwal, Head of Research at Prabhuda Siladar, will be joining in to discuss some fundamental stocks. We'll also be joined by Shashank Srivastava, the Senior Executive Marketing and Sales at Maruti to discuss more on the company's December performance. Do stay tuned in.